Hello everybody, my name is Nathan Orlman of Frost. Welcome back to another episode review video of The Walking Dead. This one is doing my weekly review on The Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 4, Slab Town. That's right guys, this is a really, really great episode that's kind of off of the main storyline a little bit. Uh, now this is this episode's purely on Beth, uh, so if you guys don't want any spoilers or anything like that, I feel like I have to warn you guys that uh, I... Th this episode review will contain spoilers, you know, it's not a non-spoiler review or anything like that, so it will contain spoilers up until Season 5, Episode 4. So definitely look away if you guys haven't seen uh, the last episode, or uh, at least up until then. So, yeah. Anyways, spoilers. Just letting you guys know. Don't don't bitch about me in the comment section because I didn't warn you. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> Alright. Anywho, the episode basically starts off... Uh, with how I predict it, it would. You know, there was a... In, in my prediction video for this episode, uh, there was actually a sneak peek that I kind of went over in my prediction video. And that sneak peek was of Beth waking up in the hospital and kind of looking out the window, seeing a run down Atlanta. And we actually find out that it is Atlanta indeed. Uh, it's a run down Atlanta. Basically, she goes over to the door. She starts screaming, banging on the door, you know, stuff like that. And uh, a doctor... And uh, basically the leader of the group, uh, which her name is Dawn, we, we, we come to find out pretty quickly that she's not really to be messed with, uh, in all honesty. You know, she's not really... Uh, she, she's a good leader, I have to say, but at the same time, uh, you know, if she has something out of control real quickly, she gets very, very angry, uh, if you guys know what I mean. And uh, she kind of just takes things drastically, I do have to say. Uh, so anyways, yeah. Dawn is the leader of the group. She's also a police officer. And uh, anyway, she comes in with the doctor and uh, kind of says, put the put the thing down because she, she took it off of her arm. Uh, this little, basically, uh, monitor type thing that, you know, they put on their patient's arms and stuff when they're monitoring them. Uh, when they're in a coma or, you know, they're really, really injured, you know, something like that. Uh, just something, you know, around that kind of area, you know. She takes it off of her arm kind of tries to use it as a weapon, and then kind of gets shut down. So anyway, they walk in the room, they kind of explain to her what the whole place is about. Uh, they basically say, you know, if we didn't pick you up on the road, uh, you were you were fighting a walker on the road, if we didn't pick you up, you would have been dead. And so on and so forth. Uh, anyways, we come to find out that this place, uh, this Slab Town, which it's not obviously called Slab Town, because that wouldn't be the greatest... Uh, marketing proposal, you know, to name your <laughs> your name name your sanctuary Slab Town. That would not be good. Uh, but anyways, we come to find out that this is the place where they save people. They quote save people, and they basically make those people that they saved work for them. They make them owe them, if you guys know what I mean. So, for example, they picked up Beth, and uh, basically she says, "We saved you, and now you owe us." Uh, so basically, it kind of skips a few a little bit, and she starts working, okay? She starts working, and she's working with the doctor. This is her job. She's working with the doctor, you know, giving patients medicine, uh, changing sheets, you know, stuff like this. Just just random stuff, you know, working with the doctor and uh, stuff like that. And basically, the more you eat and the more you do in that community, the more you owe. So while she's kind of doing her work, you know, if she does her work and she pays what she's owed... Uh, and stuff like that, then they will be set free. You know, they'll they'll let her go and, you know, so on and so on. But you have to pay us back for the fact that we saved your life, you know. And uh, basically, they have this little scam, sort of, if you guys if you guys know what I mean. Uh, if you have ever been called by a telemarketer, you know, they kind of... They kind of get a way to hook you, in a fact. Uh, they, they, they get you to buy this product... And then, for example, they, uh, you know, basically say, oh, okay, here's this product, you can have this for nine ninety nine, uh, but if you want another one, you know, we can add $2 onto it and, you know, extra shipping and handling. That was just an example, obviously, it has nothing to do with The Walking Dead or anything like that. Uh, basically, it's like a hook, you know? Uh, they basically say, uh, you know, the more you do the work, the more you have to eat. Uh, you have to eat in order to keep doing your work, to stay strong and do your work. Uh, and if you do not eat, then you won't be able to do your work. You won't be able to pay what is owed. But, on the other hand, the more you eat, the more you owe. 
So it's kind of like a, a never-ending cycle. You know, you're free to go when you're done paying, but you're not going to get done paying anytime soon because you just have to keep eating, you know? And uh, anyway, it's kind of, it, it's really just a hook and stuff like that. So, anywho, uh, that's that. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the Call of Duty Advanced Warfare gameplay. I'm going to try to put in Exo Survival uh, down there. I actually got the game today. Uh, I know this has, again, completely nothing to do with The Walking Dead. I got the games thanks to my friend Simon or Gunheard it, so definitely thank him in the comment section. Uh, but anyways, moving on to more of The Walking Dead. <laughs> That was kind of off topic, I know. I just wanted to address the issue in case maybe you haven't ever seen that gameplay or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, basically that happens. You know, they kind of explain to her, you know, you have to eat and stuff like that and blah, 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 blah. And there's been a few times where, you know, they, you know, she, she got the food for the doctor and basically explains, you know, I don't want to eat because the more I eat, the more I owe. You know, she, she basically explains to the doctor... Uh, which is, uh, his name is like Stephen Edwards or something, and uh, Officer Don Lerner, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, she basically brings food to the doctor, and uh, it's guinea pig. They're eating guinea pig. I, 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 I haven't ever really heard of that, you know? I mean, honestly, I, I guess, obviously, I wouldn't hear that since uh, the world we have now, you know, you don't actually have to eat fucking guinea pig, but I suppose in a zombie apocalypse, whatever you <laughs> whatever you have available to you, uh, is what you're going to probably eat. You know, if you see a guinea pig there and you've been starving for 10 days, you're like, shit, I'm going to eat me some guinea pig. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, uh, off that topic. Uh, so yeah, they eat guinea pig. Uh, he basically shares the guinea pig with her. And, uh, you know, that's when kind of Dawn in the next scene kind of explains to Beth, uh, you know, saying in order to do your work, in order to get out of here, you have to eat, you have to stay strong. And if you don't eat and you don't stay strong, then you won't be able to do your work. So therefore, you'll never get out. But... On the other hand, the part that she's not telling her, you know, the, the more you eat, the more you owe. So, you're, you're going to stay for quite a while. Uh, on to the next part. Mm. Okay, so yeah. Uh, in the, do in the uh, doctor's office, basically, in uh, Edward's office and stuff like that. Uh, there was a bit of a quiet moment, you know, a bit of a neutral moment, I guess is what you could say. When she kind of admires the painting in his office and apparently I haven't really I, I don't really know much about art or anything like that but apparently it's the denial of St. Peter uh, painted around the year of 1610 and uh, currently it's at the Met in NYC uh, but it was on loan in Atlanta apparently uh, when this all went, when everything went down uh, basically is what they're saying uh, but anywho you know that, that I guess that could be it was on loan in Atlanta but like, current time, uh, apparently it's at the Met in NYC, so, uh, New York City, obviously, uh, for those of you guys that don't know what NYC is. I mean, I'm Canadian, and I know what NYC is, so, <laughs> I would hope you do, too, if you live in the U.S., uh, but anywho, yeah, I don't know how they got that to Atlanta, or maybe it's just sort of a replica, or, you know, something like that, who knows, uh, but anywho, uh, anyway, new patient, Wiston, Gavin, uh, basically, you fell from a second floor window. Uh, the officer who brings him in whispers something to Don, uh, who suddenly becomes much more involved. Uh, Edwards basically says that he, it's a losing battle. You know, he basically can't save him. You know, it would be just a waste of resources if we tried. And uh, Don basically says, you know, you have to try anyway. Uh, and the doc basically says, you know, I thought you said, you know, I shouldn't waste resources or anything like that. And, uh, you know, basically, Don says, well, now I want you to try. Uh, anywho, um, things aren't looking good, really. The doc shows Don uh, after she kind of, uh, you know, says, is he going to live? You know, he uh, he, he put the pen through his, um, through his lung because he had a punctured lung. And he put the pen in through it so he could breathe fine. And then uh, he basically, she basically says to the doctor, you know, is he going to live? And uh, the, base, the doc says basically, no, it's a losing battle. You know, uh, the bruised stomach, there's too much internal bleeding. Uh, and basically, when he says the bad news to her, uh, she kind of gets pissed off. You know, she's this is a moment where she's sort of losing control because she wants to save him, but she can't. There's nothing that she can do to save him, uh, if you guys know what I mean, like... 
she likes being in control, but when you can't be in control like that, she's a person that just gets pissed off and out of anger uh, does the closest thing to basically make her feel better and make her feel more in control. So she randomly hauls off and just slaps Beth in the face. Randomly. Like, she didn't do a damn thing. Uh, you know, she was helping a little bit by helping try to fix the guy. And uh, the doc basically says, you know, he's unfixable. It's not going to happen. She kind of loses control and then just randomly slaps Beth. And I mean, when I say Beth didn't do anything, she literally didn't do anything. She was just standing there. Uh, but anywho, um, she slaps Beth, basically uh, reopening the cut on her cheek. Uh, anywho. Uh, next scene, Edward's stitching Beth cheek up, Beth's cheek up, and, uh, kind of leaves it so she can put a fresh shirt on, uh, that Noah left for her, and that Noah is, uh, actually the guy from Everybody Hates Chris. Now, I don't know if you guys ever seen that TV show, personally, I haven't, I just did some research about the guy, you know, I've seen him on TV a few times, you know, kind of scrolling through the channels and stuff like that, so I do... I don't really know anything about the show, but I do know, you know, a little bit about him, you know, kind of, uh, I, I guess a little bit of background, you know, uh, for his acting career, but I'm not going to really get into that. If you guys want to know, uh, just look it up, you know, look it up on Google or Wikipedia, you know, something like that, whatever you guys want to, uh, know about him. It's probably up on the internet, you know, considering everything really usually is. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, the guy from Everybody Hates Chris is on... Uh, the Walking Dead now, and uh, he's this uh, he, he's this guy named Noah. Now, uh, she kind of opens up the shirt, she finds a lollipop in the pocket, and uh, this is where it starts to get creepy, a little later, to do with the lollipop, but we're not going to get into that right now. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, he restitches her cheeks, blah, 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 she changes her shirt, uh, she walks down the hall and happens uh, upon another emergency victim, which is Joan. Uh... Basically, she has been bitten. You know, they need to amputate her arm, but she's refusing treatment. She doesn't want them to amputate her arm or anything like that. But they basically say, too bad. You know, you're either going to die or we're going to amputate your arm. So they hold her down. Beth helps hold her down. Uh, she doesn't want to hold her down at first, but then Don kind of convinces her, you know, she's going to die if you don't come help us. Uh, so anyway, they hold her down. They cut off her arm. Uh, another gory scene from The Walking Dead, basically. You know, it actually showed them cutting the arm off with, like, uh, wire that the doctor was using, you know, it wasn't just a straight saw or a hatchet or anything like that, anything clean like that. I mean, I guess this wire that he was using, in all honesty, it's kind of like a surgical type wire, uh, so it would be a little bit of a cleaner cut, it's just uh, a little more gory and a little more blood spattering all over the place. Uh, but anywho, uh, yeah, I've, I've seen worse, don't worry. Uh, so, yeah, um... She, hold, she holds her down uh, while they saw her on Marf, and basically like that. Uh, she goes to the laundry room where her bloody clothes, uh, with her bloody clothes, and basically meets Noah, uh, which, like I said, it's a guy from uh, Everybody Hates Chris. Uh, basically, um, he's the one who left her the lollipop. She wonders why Joan would try to escape. Uh, couldn't she just work off of her debt and maybe leave? Well, Noah basically informs her that they tend to save people that are weak, and can't fight. Uh, now this is this is the part where it kind of gets into it a little bit later on. Now I'll definitely go into this uh, near the end of this episode review, so definitely kind of remember this part. Uh, basically, they try to save people that are weak and can't fight. Uh, they save them and force them to stay until they've quote worked off their debt. Uh, Noah basically says, which this is a really <laughs> really cool part right now. Now, I don't know if this is going to actually happen or not. I'm guessing it is. I'm not sure if it's the same place he's talking about. Anyway, he basically says he's from a walled community in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, he and his father were rescued, but they ha they let his dad die, and they saved Noah because his father would have been a threat. Uh, basically, he says, you know, he would have fought, he would have fought back and everything like that. He wouldn't have been good uh, you know, he would have fought back, he would have tried to get out and stuff like that. And basically, Noah says he's sneaking out and hitting back when he gets the chance. The first chance he gets, he's out of here. He's gone. And, uh, you know, that's what he intends, that's what he intends to do. You know, so he says that he's from this wall community in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, now, I don't know if you guys know or not, but in Virginia, 
there's a little town called Alexandria. And uh, in the comic books, you know, they're at the Alexandria safe zone. Uh, it's basically a walled-in community in Virginia. And, uh, you know, this is where we could get to see it in the show. You know, maybe the maybe Noah meets up with the rest of the group. You know, maybe Beth and everybody make it back to the other group. I'm going to leave this for other predictions and stuff as well. Uh, but maybe, you know, somehow they make it to this Walden community. And maybe Noah is how it happens. You know, this is, this is maybe how it happens. This is how they get lid to this Walden community. So anyways... Uh, Don brings Beth some food in the next scene. Uh, Beth basically tells her that she's not staying any longer than they make her. Uh, basically, Don tries to sell her on staying in the hospital. Uh, she thinks that the world will return to normal, uh, and it's important to keep safety and order. And uh, Beth ma basically maintains that she wants to leave, uh, but she does eat, though. You know, she ca Don basically explains to her, you know, you won't be able to get your work done unless you eat. And uh, I guess that kind of makes sense to Beth, so uh, she goes ahead and eats anyways. Uh, now, as she mops up the blood in the newly amputated, jo amputated uh, Joan's room, basically, uh, she wakes up. Joan wakes up. She tells Beth that Don couldn't control her, uh, control her men, uh, but she doesn't make it easier. Uh, she won't tell Beth uh, what they did to her. Uh, basically, I think personally the reason why she tried to escape is because of sexual harassment, sexual, uh, you know, possibly even rape. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Because uh, we see from this officer, this man officer, uh, you know, she, he, this guy is not good. You know, he, he's not good at all. Uh, he basically harasses all the women, basically sexually and just stuff like this. And, you know, obviously he could be a rapist as well. We don't really know that for a fact uh, or anything like that. But, you know, it's kind of obvious. You know, it, it's kind of getting there. He's definitely, uh, he's definitely creepy as fuck. Uh, but anywho... Uh, she basically says, you know, she won't tell Beth what they did to her. It, she basically says, it doesn't matter. I guess it's easier to make a deal with the devil when you're not the one paying the price. Uh, so anyways, Beth now back in her room. She looks for the lollipop that uh, Noah left her. And she uh, apparently put it under her mattress. And the officer that I was just talking about, um, basically, I, I forget what his name is. I think it was Gorman or something. I think it's like Officer Gorman or something. Uh, but anyway, he walks in, and uh, he walks in basically sucking on the lollipop. You know, he unwraps it, he puts it in his mouth, and he's like, lose something. And then he offers, he comes over. This is just a really creepy scene, guys. <laughs> it's all honesty. It's really awkward and really creepy to talk about. Uh, but anyway, he comes over, he offers Beth a taste, and pushes it basically inside of her mouth. And she, uh, he, he basically creeps out uh, Beth, like, to fuck. Like, he, he creeps the shit out of her, and uh, Edward comes in and b basically breaks things up. Uh, you know, basically says, leave her alone. Uh, girl should have been mine, uh, Gorman says. Uh, and then Edwards basically challenges him over his ownership of Joan. Quote, ownership of Joan. Uh, telling him, basically, that no one is anyone's property. You know? Uh, Don basically comes by, and uh, Gorman threatens the doctor, saying that Don will won't always be in charge, and then when they all leave, Beth asks the doctor why he stays, and in response to her, uh, he takes her basically to the ground floor. Uh, he bangs on the metal shutters with a pipe, uh, basically waters immediately attack. Atlanta is pretty much a bad place to be, you know, this is the only reason he stays in this community, is because there's pretty much no way out, you know, he just... He went down to an escape route, kind of, you know, down to the ground floor, and you, you pretty much can't get out there, because, uh, you know, there's a bunch of walkers outside of that uh, first door and stuff like that. So anyway, they hit up to the roof. Uh, he basically tells her how it all started with Atlanta Destroyed. Uh, they started to trade care for service. Man in charge, Hansen, uh, started to crack, basically, and got people killed. Uh, Don basically, quote, took care of them and kept them safe. Uh, as bad as it gets, it's still better than down there. Basically, you know, referring to Atlanta as a whole, referring to the city, referring to just out there uh, in the world with the walkers and stuff like that, you know. Can't be worse than that. But, on the other hand, uh, walkers don't sexually harass you or try to rape you. They just try to eat you. Uh... <laughs> 
anyways, uh, that could be definitely taken out of context. Uh, but anywho, uh, that's that. And they kind of go up to the roof. She, ba he, Edwards now tells Beth to check on Mr. Trevitt uh, and basically instructs her to give him 75 milligrams of clozapine. Or I think that's how you pronounce it. It's like clozapine, clozapine, something like that, whatever. Um, basically, Beth goes down and injects it. Noah stops by just as Trevitt starts to seize uh, and flatlines, basically. Don demands to know what basically happened. Uh, and Noah actually takes the blame, saying that he accidentally unplugged the ventilator. Uh, Don tells an officer to take Noah to her office. And when Beth tries to explain what happened to Edwards, uh, he basically says, You gave him uh, clonazepam. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to pronounce these big words here. Uh, clonazepam. Uh, and... Basically, Beth didn't give him cl clonazepam he she gave him cl clozapine you know that's what uh that's what she gave him was clozapine or clonazepine or something like that it's something like that you know i don't know uh too much about these huge ass fucking words and shit like that i think that's how you pronounce it though uh but anyways beth is kind of confused uh basically she says that you know you told me to give him you, you told me to give him clozapine and uh apparently he said Clonazepam, but he definitely said Clozapine because I watched the damn episode. So, anywho, uh, Noah is being beaten in the other room. That's what they hear. Uh, anyway, later, Dawn comes to Beth's room. Uh, she knows that Noah didn't unplug the ventilator. Uh, she says that she had to beat Noah uh, basically to keep up appearances, you know. Uh, she proceeds to tell Beth that Beth isn't the greater good and hence isn't keeping her worth. Uh, the words basically keep her officers happy, uh, the happier my officers are, and the harder they work to keep us going, to keep us safe, uh, she basically says, uh, you know, it, it's basically a warning to fall in line, uh, or she's basically done there, you know, like, start doing your shit, start doing what you're supposed to do, or you're pretty much done, anywho, uh, that happens, Beth now goes to see Noah, uh, who basically says he's fine, he has a black eye and a cut on his eyebrow, uh, he tells her that he knows that Trevitt uh, was important to Don for some reason, uh, but Beth says she'll basically leave with him. Uh, you know, she basically says, you know, uh, I'm done here as well, so if you guys, if you want to do this, if you want to leave uh, with me right now, like, uh, we'll, we'll do this. And he basically explains to her, you know, there's an elevator key inside of Don's office, uh, so if you can get your hands on that, we can get the hell out of here. Uh, and then when they basically get their chance, uh, Beth goes through Don's drawers and, uh, in the office, and she finds a wallet, and, uh, we basically see her looking at an ID, uh, with, um, St. Ignic Ignatius, that's hard to pronounce, uh, hospital on the back, and basically, they learn later that this is basically, it, it belonged to Trevitt, you know, that it, it's basically, it, it belonged to Trevitt. Uh, so anyways... Uh, yeah, she looks over and finds the body of Joan on the floor, and, uh, it looks like she killed herself, uh, basically by opening up the sutures on her amputation and just bleeding out that way. Uh, so yeah, she killed herself, you know, she wanted out, you know, uh, apparently you didn't actually need to cut off her arm in the first place, she wanted to die, uh, so she found a way to do it, you know, she, you just basically butchered her. Uh, so anyways... Uh, yeah, she finds the body of Joan on the floor. Uh, she killed herself by opening up the sutures. Uh, basically, ignoring the body, she finds the spare key in a drawer just as good old Officer Creepy Gorman walks in. Uh, he basically offers, offers her to keep quiet uh, if Beth will be, quote, friendly. Uh, this <laughs> Again, this is where it says to get pretty creepy. Uh, she, he basically says, I know we can work something out. You know, maybe Don doesn't have to know about this. And uh, Beth kind of plays along for a little bit. Uh, you know, there's hands going in places that there shouldn't be hands going in of Beth's uh, kind of shirt. And uh, she looks over and sees that Joan is reanimating. Obviously, she didn't stab herself in the head. She just opened up her sutures and uh, let herself bleed out. So, obviously, she's going to turn into a walker. So, she's reanimating. And uh, she agrees to go along with Norman and uh, kind of buy some time. And uh, just as things start to heat up a little bit she grabs a uh basically a lollipop jar from don's desk and just smashes him over the head with it he falls to the ground the walker uh joan walker joan uh she jumps on top of him and starts biting his neck 
Uh, so he's dead, basically. Uh, she grabs his gun from out of his holster real quickly, runs out the doorway, kind of hides the gun, and then tells Dawn on the way that... Uh, uh, basically, Dawn was wondering where she was going and stuff like that. She had the elevator key and everything like that. Uh, ready to go with Noah. And uh, she basically tries to distract Dawn by saying that uh, Gorman was looking for her in her office. So she starts hitting down the hallway. And... Beth and Noah starts hitting towards the elevator shaft. So yeah. Anywho. Um, they make a break for the elevator shaft. Uh, basically while screams echo from Don's office. Uh, Noah, Noah basically has this big string, big rope kind of made out of towels and shirts and you know stuff like that. And, and he lowers Beth down the shaft. Uh, basically on that makeshift rope. Uh, he climbs down the rope after a walker reaches out through some elevator doors, and uh, he kind of falls into a pile of bodies at the bottom of the shaft, uh, and then Beth jumps down after him. This pile of bodies, by the way, this is where they uh, take all their dead. Everybody that dies during surgery, or everybody that just dies during, like, in general, basically, they dump them down there to kind of get rid of them. They don't bury them or anything like that, because they're inside of this secure hospital, so they don't really have access to bury anybody or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, that's that. They kind of sh shove him down an elevator shaft and kind of like, say, say, goodbye, have a great time, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> that that's what they do. Uh, so yeah, uh, basically they make a run for the elevator shaft. They jump down after him. Uh, Beth jumps down after Noah. Uh, Noah's leg is messed up, but he, he can limp, he can walk. Uh, they fight their way out of the basement and into the parking lot. Now this is where we get to see a really cool, bad si badass side of Beth that we haven't really seen before. You know, we've seen a little bit... Uh, of it when she was with Daryl, you know, we've seen her take down a couple walkers and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know, it, it was pretty nice before, but this is where she took, took shit into her own hands and just did not give a fuck about anything. Uh, so anyways, they fight their way into the parking lot, tons of more walkers on the other side of the fence. Uh, she basically breaks through the fence, she climbs through the fence. Uh, Noah, basically, he still has a bum leg, so he can't really fight the walkers right now. So she stomps on a walker. Uh, you know, she shoots, like, five, six, maybe even seven walkers. Uh, you know, she kind of kicks one down. Uh, she's basically covering Noah as he's running to the fence. Um, he squeezes through the gate on the other side. And then Beth being half slowed down, slowed down by the walkers, you know, having to kill the walkers and everything like that. Uh, he, Noah makes it through, but Beth, sadly, does not. Uh, she basically, she gets tackled by an, uh, an officer... Uh, and as she's wrestled to the ground, she sees Noah escaping, and basically that makes her happy. You know, that's all she really wanted. Uh, and anywho, uh, yeah, that's that. So, Dawn now is with Beth in her office, uh, where, um, it, we're noting kind of, it's a, there's a third body on the floor, uh, next to Gorman, basically, uh, who's had his stomach partially eating and uh, eaten out. So we can assume that when Beth told Don, uh, you know, that Gorman was in her office and stuff like that, that one of the officers probably came with her and, uh, he basically got tackled to the ground and eaten, eaten right away. Uh, so anyways, um, she pleads basically self-defense, you know, he, she says that Gorman attacked her, uh, and is basically saying, uh... You know, bas basically saying that um, he's attacking everybody and you got, you are just ignoring it, you know? Um, no one's coming. Uh, basically saying, no one's coming, Don. We're all going to die and you let this happen for nothing. Uh, you know, Gorman, uh, they're, they're attacking women and you're kind of just uh, ignoring it and shit like that. And uh, Don basically looks like she's thinking about it and then all of a sudden... Pistols, wh pistol whip the pistol whips the shit out of her. I don't know why I had struggled saying that, but anyways, pistol whips the shit out of Beth, which we actually seen in the season five trailer uh, for The Walking Dead season five. Uh, that's why I said season five trailer. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's that. She kind of pistol whipped the shit out of her. Uh, now back into Edward's office, Doctor Edward's office, basically examining Beth uh, and uh, suturing up her new her her new cut on her forehead, basically. Uh, and as he starts to leave the room, Beth basically confronts him, you know. How did you know Trevitt was a doctor? And basically, Trevitt, by the way, is uh, is the guy that they were, um, that, that Beth uh, gave the wrong drugs to. 
uh, basically, and you know he died. Uh, the one that Noah kind of took the blame for uh, unplugging the ventilator and stuff like that. And uh, he, she basically says, how did you know Trevitt was a doctor? That's why you had me give him the wrong meds, right? Why you had me kill him? And uh, basically she says, you know, if he had lived, there'd be another doctor and Don wouldn't need you. Uh, basically, Edwards doesn't fight the charge at all. You know, he basically just says outright, you know, he says they would have kicked him out or they would have had him killed. Uh... You know, he 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 base he basically looks at this painting, the painting that I was talking about before. Uh, it's something to do with I don't know religious stuff. I'm not really into that or anything like that. But what I'm getting out of it, uh, he basically says, when they arrested Christ, Peter denied being one of his disciples. Uh, he didn't have a choice because they would have crucified him too. Uh, so he basically says, you know, I had to do what I had to do to not die. Anyway, he admits to that. Uh, he leaves the room, Beth picks up a pair of scissors and starts to follow him. Uh, she stalks him down the hallway, and we see another patient being bought, brought in on a stretcher. And guess who it is, guys? Carol. That's right, guys. It's fucking Carol. Uh, now, this is where my kind of theory comes into place. Uh, you know, we, we've seen something before uh, where basically... Um, where basically, uh, you know, they, they bring in the weaker people and kind of leave the better people outside, you know, the people who would fight back. And they leave those guys and they bring in the weaker people. So what I'm assuming is there's one of two options. You know, Carol, um, they kind of met up with Noah on the outside to kind of explain what was going on. And Carol might have gotten caught on purpose. You know, that's one that's one kind of fact. That's one thing that could have happened. Uh, another thing that could have happened, Carol and Daryl could have been attacked just like uh, Beth was back in Season 4, Episode 13. Uh, basically, they could have been attacked. You know, this guy who attacked them basically says, uh, you know, they're kind of... You, you know, we, we attacked Daryl and Carol, obviously... Carol obviously looks like the weakest one of the group, but she is not. Uh, sh so they pick Carol up and then leave Daryl, and Daryl obviously goes back to, uh, you know, the church and stuff like that. Or like I said, that that could be one of the issues. Uh, you know, they actually could have been attacked, and they brought Carol instead of Daryl and and left Daryl because Daryl looked like he might have been able to fight back, and Carol looks quote weak, uh, just like they did with Beth. You know, they thought Beth was weak and stuff like that. Anywho. Uh, they brought Carol in on the stretcher. Uh, so, yeah, that, that could be one of the issues, uh, one of the things. Or, like I said, they could have met up with Noah. Noah kind of explained where Beth was, you know, stuff like that. They kind of exchanged conversations. And they came up with this plan. You know, basically, Carol goes in, gets herself caught, uh, pretends to be, uh, you know, weak, stuff like this, and uh, basically gets herself caught, gets in that hospital, and maybe it was Daryl and Noah that was going back to the church to get more help from the group. So the group could go back to the hospital and obviously help them out, help them escape and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, that, that's two situations that could be doing, uh, that could be happening right now, basically. You know, Carol got caught on purpose or, you know, Carol and Daryl got attacked and Carol was the one taken. So like I said, that's two possible situations, but that's basically it for the episode. That's where the episode ends. Carol gets rolled on on a stretcher. Uh, basically, Beth notices her, and uh, uh, you know, that's basically where the that that's that that's where it ends. That's where the episode ends. And uh, yeah, that's it for this week. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy my episode review of The Walking Dead season five, episode four, Slab Town. I did enjoy the episode very thoroughly. I liked the fact that it was based all about Beth, because Beth is a really, really good actor. You know, she can lead an episode very, very well. And uh, I like a lot of the episodes about Beth, especially back in Season 4 when it was just Daryl and Beth. That was a very interesting, a very, very cool episode. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys agree. And if you guys do, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Uh, tell me what you guys think about the episode. Tell me what you guys thought about the episode. Did you like it? Uh, do you want to see more of other characters? Uh, do you like Beth kind of leading an episode by herself? Because that's kind of what she did. You know, she she takes it up pretty well each time she does it. And uh, I'm pretty excited to see more of it in the future. So hopefully we will. Uh, hopefully they don't just bring her back into the group and have her be irrelevant again. Uh, back like in the prison and stuff like that in season three when all she did really was take care of 
of uh, of Judith, of the baby. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for my episode review of The Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 4, Slab Town. Uh, hopefully you guys will stick around um, for more Advanced Warfare coming very, very soon. Uh, I will have more videos up of that tomorrow and stuff like that. And uh, anyways, I'm, basically my point is I'm going to be spamming Advanced Warfare videos and probably more Destiny and stuff like that. So anyways, uh, my episode prediction video for The Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 5. Uh, I know that kind of um, basically is sort of irrelevant. Uh, is... At this, at this point, at least, it's kind of irrelevant because we're still a little bit away uh, from my prediction video for that. Uh, but anyway, just want to let you guys know, if you guys don't know, I do prediction videos and stuff like that. I do. Uh, prediction videos are airing every Thursday uh, on my channel before the upcoming episode of The Walking Dead and every Monday after the upcoming episode of The Walking Dead, basically. Uh, so yeah, Mondays are my reviews. Thursdays are my predictions for the next episode. So yeah, hopefully you guys stick around for Thursday. Uh, my predictions of Season 5, Episode 5, Self-Help. Now, I don't know exactly what this is going to be, but uh, by, the, by the sneak peeks and the promos and stuff like that, I think it's going to be on Abraham's group. You know, Glenn, Maggie, Abraham, uh, Rosita, Eugene, everybody like that. I think it's going to be basically about them, and I'm pretty excited to see where that goes. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you guys are too. Stick around to that, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. All right, guys. Bye.